Hello everyone and thanks for joining us today. I'm Tulika Gurg, Group Product Manager with Adobe Stickcom Group. Today we'll see how XML documentation for Adobe Experience Manager brings the power of Adobe Analytics to your content. So you can gather data into the content consumption patterns and use those insights to define your content strategy. Let me start by giving a brief overview of Adobe Analytics. Adobe Analytics is a market leader in consumer analytics. It is Adobe's cloud-based offering for usage tracking and reporting. Adobe Analytics tracks the usage and consumption of your end users as and when they're consuming the content posted on your public sites. Then Adobe Analytics generates various user-friendly reports, which gives you insights into these consumption patterns. One of the very important capability of Adobe Analytics is a highly intuitive graphical user interface for delivering reports. This makes it easier for stakeholders such as content managers to focus on what is relevant, that is, usage reports. With XML documentation for AEM, we bring the power of Adobe Analytics to your content. With XML documentation, we provide out-of-box template for publishing your content, and we call it the knowledge base template. This knowledge base template is instrumented to track the usage using Adobe Analytics. So when you publish your content, or articles to this knowledge base template, you get the full power of Adobe Analytics by default for your published content. And what do we mean by full power of Adobe Analytics? What we mean is that the default tracking and instrumentation in the template generates actionable insights for content authors and managers. But what are these actionable insights? For one, you get various usage and consumption pattern reports. These give you deep quantitative insights at two levels, your customers and your content. At consumer level, these reports tell you who your users are, where they are, and how they are consuming the content. At content level, you can see which is your most popular content, which content gets viewed together, what is the most frequently searched content, and so on. Adobe Analytics also provides anomaly detection, which can provide content oversight. Anomaly detection provides a statistical method to determine how a given metric has changed in relation to previous data. It lets you identify which statistical fluctuation matter and which don't. You can then identify the root cause of a true anomaly and take corrective action. Example of anomalies you might want to investigate include spikes in content views from a particular geo, or spikes in support or troubleshooting page for a specific part or a product, or let's say drops in landing page views. And then the third one, where Adobe Analytics generate insights for you, which can inform your content strategy. For example, you can see the queries for which your end users are not able to find answers, or which content has lower rating from end users. This allows you to determine where to direct your investment from content authoring perspective. So these three together form the actionable insights for content authors and managers. So actionable insights enable authors and content managers to do more with their content. But in addition to enabling the authors and managers, external documentation has built-in automation to put these analytics to work for you. This automation brings the power of analytics to your end users in the form of dynamic experiences. 
The out-of-box knowledge-based template provided by XML documentation has dynamic widgets available in the template. These dynamic widgets have a reverse integration with Adobe Analytics. So they pull aggregate data from Adobe Analytics to generate dynamic content for your end users. For example, traditionally, authors might be documenting the top few documentation topics in the landing page. But with these dynamic content widgets, authors do not have to do that anymore. The dynamic widgets pull this information from Adobe Analytics directly. So your end users get an up-to-date list of frequently viewed topics, which is based on data captured by Adobe Analytics. And as your end users browse different content, this data keeps getting updated and your end users always get real-time dynamic content from these widgets. So think of all the manual work which authors would have to do to pull this information about most frequently viewed topics from analytics manually and then document it, document it in the landing page and then publish the landing page. And the list of frequently viewed topics would change and authors would have to keep doing this task repeatedly. But these dynamic widgets remove all that manual work and saves valuable time for authors. So we have heard about a lot of exciting stuff about how XML documentation brings more power to your team and to your content with Adobe Analytics. And now it is time to see all of this in action in a demo. So let us start by looking at the content which has been published to AEM using XML documentation. Uh, these are some of the articles or topics that uh, we have published using the new knowledge base template, which is instrumented for tracking by Adobe Analytics. And uh, we have put together this whole uh, guide, uh, which is the product documentation guide for Overhub. And uh, as uh, users are browsing or uh, through this content, all that uh, data is being tracked in Adobe Analytics. So let's go to the Adobe Analytics uh, dashboard. Let's me start by logging into uh, Adobe's DX Cloud. So this is the landing page for Adobe's uh, DX Cloud, and you can access various uh, DX solutions from here. We are interested in accessing analytics, where we are tracking this analytics data. Logging in there will take me to my workspaces. Uh, I have multiple workspaces. The one where I'm tracking the data from this particular a guide or content that has been published to AEM is, uh, I, I'm calling it RHKB reports. And uh, we can, uh, now we'll look at each uh, individual report and what are the capabilities available there. One of the reports here is the top search terms. So it uh, gives you which are the top user queries. This is uh, tracking the searches users are making either at the KB level or the category level. And uh, then another uh, report is the unanswered search query. So this uh, tracks uh, the search queries for which users were not able to find any articles or any content. Uh, it's a very useful report so uh, to give you insights into what kind of content user is looking for, but uh, you don't have content uh, available for that. So it can help you define uh, your content strategy and which content you should be creating more uh, in your KVs. Then uh, another useful report is the top viewed pages. So it shows which are the pages which are being uh, viewed most by your end users. So which content is being consumed the most. So this is, again, a good insight for you to know which are the areas in which uh, your end users are seeking help. And uh, another report we have is the geo distribution of visitors. So uh, uh, this uh, helps you determine uh, how your users are uh, distributed uh, geo-wise. Uh, it can be a good insight uh, in determining uh, things like how do you want to spend your localization dollars if you are localizing your knowledge base in multiple languages. and. Uh, uh, you can track this at uh, various metric level. Right now, it is tracking unique visitors, due uh, distribution of unique visitors. Uh, but you can also, within those unique visitors, they could be generating different kind of, uh, different number of uh, uh, visits. Uh, so we, you can change that. 
and uh, view that. So maybe some of your power users in uh, could reside elsewhere. So even though the number of unique visitors are less, but uh, overall they are generating a large number of page views or consuming your uh, um, KV or content more from that geo. Then uh, another useful report is the weekly usage pattern. It tries to uh, analyze the usage in, in uh, and consolidate and aggregate that in a weekly fashion. It's a very useful report if uh, you want to plan major upgrades around your KB or major content uploads or a template update or any other kind of uh, IT update. So this helps you determine uh, the usage patterns and the down days uh, on which around which you can plan your upgrades. Another uh, very interesting and unique report, uh, which is uh, not available uh, easily in uh, uh, standard tracking system is the knowledge flow report. So what this report does is it tracks the flow of a user within this uh, knowledge base and how they are navigating this content and what's their entry view, uh, page and from there, uh, which is the page where they view next. And so what is their whole uh, navigation? And then how do they exit? Uh, it, it's, it's a good insight into how your users are consuming content. Most of the time, the content consumption paths, uh, whether it's manifesting in terms of breadcrumbs or TOC or uh, trainings or related articles, it's defined by authors. But uh, this report gives you visibility in uh, how uh, end users are viewing it. So it can help you uh, auto create uh, some related content or if you are planning to create some uh, custom courses, putting together a number of related content where uh, end users are seeking help. So it gives you good insights into that particular flow from an end user perspective. Uh, another uh, useful report is uh, the usage pattern in terms of average time spent. And uh, you can see uh, what kind of time your end users are spending on your content. And uh, it helps you also determine whether they are making uh, early exits or they are not spending enough time and what kind of content you should be creating to cater to those particular needs. Then there are some standard reports on uh, which are the browsers used by your uh, users, which are the operating systems used, and uh, the overall uh, consumption, the number of page views that your knowledge base is uh, generating over a timeline. So you can uh, this is this is a useful view to see if you uh, to detect anomalies also and to see if you are expecting any standard patterns. So let's say you did, did a major, major release and then you did a documentation release around that release and you were expecting that spike. So uh, you can correlate uh, the spikes to that. But if you don't see uh, spikes uh, where you were expecting spikes, so maybe you need to do a more a push or a campaign to promote that documentation to make sure uh, people are aware of the new release and the corresponding documentation. So uh, these are some of the reports uh, that are available with this new KB template. And uh, while these reports in themselves are uh, very useful, uh, what you can uh, further do and what uh, this KB does is it takes these reports to power end user dynamic experiences within the template. So how it does that is uh, let me take you back to the uh, the knowledge base that we have published. And if we go back to the, uh, the category level knowledge base, so uh, you can see uh, the top view pages, it just got populated uh, here. And this is uh, not uh, static content. So this content is actually being fetched based on the top viewed pages report from here. And that is what is uh, powering this list here. So your authors are not uh, statically creating this content, but uh, it's being served based on those analytics. So it's real time and gets refreshed regularly and creates a dynamic experience for your end users. And this is just one example of uh, this dynamic widget. So uh, it, this is just to demonstrate that there's this two-way communication happening with Adobe Analytics uh, from the knowledge base. So while the uh, knowledge base uh, usage uh, is being tracked in analytics, and then that is can be used to power uh, dynamic experiences here. So top view pages is one. Then you can similarly uh, have uh, when the user start typing, 
uh, have uh, the most frequently searched terms being pulled from the report of uh, the search report. And uh, there are uh, many other such stuff. You can have a category here based on the uh, user's uh, locale, so based on their geo and uh, the this usage report can be filtered in terms of geo, so you can have a dynamic widget for uh, uh, to show the top content being viewed by other users in your region, so that uh, users get more uh, localized content rather than uh, uh, the global top view pages. And uh, depending on their use case, they can consume either one of those. And with that, we come to the end of today's session. It was a pleasure showing this to you and I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Thank you for joining.